Um, stay tuned for that. But for now, I want to continue with the program. And first one on the stage this afternoon is Jeff Jago from Jago Capital and Jago Merch. You see a lot of people with hive caps. It's all from him. <clears throat> How's it going, everybody? I'm Jeff Jago, co-founder of Visionary Studios. And uh, there's a little bit about me and my experience on Hive. I uh, started back in 2016, uh, basically right after the chain launched. Um, and I've been pretty much active ever since. Got a, almost 5,000 posts now and a reputation of about 74.3. Um, big proponent of the Hive blockchain, always a vocal supporter and trying to onboard you know, everybody around me as much as possible. Um, big advocate of the community during the hostile takeover event. Um, this is my fourth High Fest event. Went to uh, Lisbon, Krakow, and Thailand. Missed the first Amsterdam, so had to definitely come back to this. So Visionary Studios, it's a project development company. Uh, it's blockchain agnostic. We'll build pretty much anywhere, wherever the infrastructure is there for us. Uh, we're focused on creating high quality projects um, that have real world use cases. Uh, we've, we've seen that a lot of the space uh, kind of really lacks legitimacy. Uh, a lot of the projects are just, you know, there's no substance to them. They're just memes or something like that. And uh, we really wanted to partner with existing businesses that have uh, real revenue structures and bring them into Web3 because we think that's the, the best way to, you know, bring mass adoption is meet people where they are. So we launched in March 2021, uh, six co-founders, and uh, we launched with a collection of 777 NFTs on Solana, uh, sold out in 10 seconds at 11.11 .11 sold each back, back in March. And there was over 12,000 wallets attempting to mint at the time. Um, the Genesis membership holders will receive benefits from all the projects that are put out under the Visionary Studios umbrella. And here's a look at what the umbrella looks like to this point. Um, we've got projects in the sports realm, film realm, some uh, game fi, and uh, we're also in the culinary industry. And uh, here's a, just some info on some of the projects that we've put out already. Uh, one of them being Hungry Robot Chicken Club which uh, we partnered with a fast casual chicken restaurant in New York City. Uh, they've got about 15 locations and uh, do like $50 million annual revenue of just selling chicken. Um, get, you know, on the streets of New York City, they got millions of customers a year coming through their stores. And we were able to partner with them to launch a rewards program using NFTs and uh, basically, you hold the NFT and you'll get, you know, buy one, get one, free sandwiches for as long as you're uh, holding this NFT. Um, but more importantly, we partnered with Lunchbox, who is their uh, online ordering system. And basically, uh, they have hundreds of other clients in the uh, fast casual restaurant business who are kind of looking at this. And if this is successful, we'll also get into Web3 and, you know, make NFTs that will be rewards programs for the customers. That was just a walkthrough of how, how the process would work. They connect their wallet, get codes, and they could you know, go to Sticky's Finger Joint and receive uh, discounts and free food. Another project we got under the umbrella is Solo Fox, which is a, uh, it's a game uh, featuring Gen 0 and Gen 1 NFTs. Uh, those NFTs are your characters in the game. Uh, it's play to earn with a token called Solo Coin, which you could also stake those NFTs for. Uh, the game has a big focus on composability. Um, we want to, you know, incorporate uh, cross, um, you know, incorporate other NFTs into the game from other projects. We think that, uh, you know, being composable and being able to, uh, you know, bring in other projects into into the project is a, a great way to, uh, you know, 
build a community and you know embrace the, the true powers of Web3. Um, so it's very rewarding. There's a lot of you know NFT giveaways and um, token giveaways and stuff. Uh, in the future, we got mini great mini games and you know like play to earn uh, chess. You could do you know play, player versus player gamble. You know put put a wager against each other and whoever wins that chess match will get the uh, the winnings and stuff like that. Um, here's a look at the gameplay. It's like a side by side 2D um, game. Here. So that was just a little trailer we had for our Gen 1 Mint, which was finished in August, um, featuring some of the honorary influencers in the Solana NFT space. Um, we also have a partnership with Collectors Club. Um, they're launched by Cards Away Sports, which is a really successful collectible store for over two decades. Uh, they sell you know, sports cards, autographs, and stuff like that, uh, mostly on eBay for the past two decades. But uh, they've, they've entered the NFT space, and they really want to bridge the gap between physical and digital collectibles. Um, so they have giveaways for sports cards and autographs, at Pokemon cards and stuff like that for the NFT holders. But they're also um, you know, trying to create uh, physical, um, physical collectibles for your digital NFTs. And so here's a look at um, their slabbing process which if you have an NFT that you like, you could get slabbed, just kind of like a traditional uh, collectible card and uh, get that shipped right to you. Another big project we're working on is Girl in the Red Cape. This is our venture into film three. Um, it's got a pretty great A-class list of uh, creatives that are working on it. The art is done by Stuzer, who also did our Genesis membership. Uh, he's a very uh, prominent artist on Ethereum. Good friends with Beeple does, uh, you know, sells his one ones for you know eight to ten ETH each, and uh, now he's venturing into uh, Solana NFTs with us. But uh, the story is written by Zach Stentz. Zach did the uh, writing for Thor, X Men First Class, um, Agent Cody Banks, and some other big Hollywood movies, and it's narrated by Lance Reddick, who's from uh, John Wick, The Wire, and some other um, popular movies and television shows but it's going to be an eight uh, 12 piece chapter or 12 chapter art series where uh with a story written by zach that follows the girl in the red cape through 12 different worlds created by stuzer and uh it's going to explore all different mediums uh after we have the uh film experience we're going to take it around to film festivals and we're going to turn it into a book we're going to turn it into coffee table um, magazine and stuff like that. But basically we're building some IP that we'll be able to take around and uh, hopefully create something really special with. Um, here's a look, a sneak peek actually at some of the uh, Girl in the Red Cape. Carved human features, the curves and lines of eyes, lips and cheekbones hewn from ancient rock. of the monument became as clear as her own mission. It was a message to her. Come find me. So as you can see, there's some audio mastering that still needs to be done there. So we're in post-production and uh, that's slated for probably sometime in October. Um, and how does it all relate to Hive? Well, we think that Hive is the best Web3 content creative platform um, for creating and distributing content. 
So, you know, when we put out our announcements and we put out any content, we put it on Hive. We uh, post all our videos on 3Speak, Girl in the Red Cape trailers, and, uh, you know, when, when the Girl in the Red Cape is finally released, it's, it's all going to be on 3Speak. It's all going to be available on Hive because we believe that using, you know, Web3 technology is the answer. Um, it's almost a no-brainer for any company that's in the cryptocurrency space to use Hive for their announcements because... Um, you know, it's a native crypto uh, audience. Most of the people in the Hive uh, space are familiar with cryptocurrency. And then at the same time, you generate revenue by just cr creating content that you're already going to be putting out on Medium, Instagram, Facebook, whatever you're going to be doing. Um, and like I said, we're blockchain agnostic. Right now, we uh, most of our projects are built on Solana. We've got one coming out on Ethereum. But in the future, when the infrastructure is here on Hive, we'll well, we have no problem building on Hive as well. And uh, for now, we just we use it more as a communication platform, and uh, we hope to see more uh, companies that are building on other chains use Hive for just that. So yes, yeah, pretty much, pretty much Visionary Studios there. If anybody has any questions. Yeah, I could. Do you have any open positions? <laughs> we can talk. Cool. Hi, it's Jux from Rising Star. Um, you talked about NFTs being used in your games from other games. I'd like to know a bit more about that, obviously. <laughs> yeah, so um, basically, right now, Solofox, that, that was uh, the game that was shown. That's uh, on Solana. So. We, we have um, partnerships with some other NFTs on Solana, like Borioku Dragons, Solana Monkey Business, and some other ones where their NFTs are in the game as um, almost NPC characters. And uh, you could go up to them in the town hub, which is almost like a kind of like a metaverse experience, you know, talk to these guys. And then also it'll include a link to their site. So it's almost like a way to market other projects within this town hub. But um, yeah, maybe we could do something with Rising Star too. I, I'm I'm a Rising Star player as well, so <laughs> good to hear. So is that something you would charge for? Uh, we can talk more afterwards. But... Not necessarily. Okay, let's talk. <laughs> for sure. Oh, Starkers. I nearly, had, I nearly had to dive for that one. <laughs> <laughs> Jago, you're um. You're a long time guy around Hive, and it's uh, it's really amazing to see what you're doing, man. It's fantastic. And last time we saw you at Hive Fest three years ago, you were just another Hive bum like the rest of us, you know. Can can you explain what the hell happened? <laughs> I'm I'm still just a Hive like the rest of us, but um, I was always you know on every chain, you know, trying trying all cryptos as much as possible, and. Uh, I was on Ethereum, you, you know, playing around with the DeFi protocols and stuff. And uh, when Radium came out on Solana and I was able to uh, unstake and stake without, uh, you know, paying $100 fees every time I wanted to move money around, I just kind of got hooked into the Solana ecosystem and uh, kind of just dove headfirst into uh, Solana. But then uh, I was lucky enough to be there for the first NFT mint on Solana, which I minted a lot of, and it ended up uh, putting me in a good position. <laughs> so just take another question. Could, could you explain for other people who are trying to um, mirror the success that you've managed to, to, to build and obviously much hope for much more in the future from you, like what was it that you think you did that other people maybe can think in that same way and, 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 and find similar success in the way that you have? I would say um, you want to surround yourself with people that are thinking in the same wavelength as you and that are uh, trying to you know build and see the world the way you see it. You definitely want to surround yourself with people that are um, just kind of doing the same thing you're doing. Um, the people around you are, are going to be you know, the most supportive and drive you to do, you know, whatever you're doing. Cheers, man. Slancha. Congrats. Mm. Okay. 
Well, thank you. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, man. Thank you. Uh -huh. uh, gracias.